Fucking speaking of, how's your elbow? Oh, it's good. It's it's ooh, it's a, a, nice it's a good scar, but a little, it doesn't a hurt. Yeah, just a little, a little, 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 little kiss from happy. Calico. Yeah, you know, that's cool. I, like I said, I, I, uh, I Calico left his mark on me, and you know, I left I left my mark on Calico. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, eating mad shit, sliding is. Like in the moment, really fucking scary because your immediate thought is just like, oh fuck, I'm getting my pads pulled. But like once you have time to like have everything settle, you're just like, what the fuck was I thinking? <laughs> that was that's what I was so funny for me because I was like, oh fuck, like I hope nobody saw. And like I was, you know, in the tunnel where I wasn't supposed to be, and fucking John and Devin were behind me. Yeah. And uh I went and I hit it and I I because I did it last year on Halloween and, and it was fine, right? I didn't know that they repaved it, like in between last right. halloween and this year and they did and so literally like it took a chunk out of my my uh my burly caps and so like i i slid and just like immediately like gripped like yeah. it was like sliding on straight sandpaper i just stopped and then like i crashed and i hit my elbow and i didn't think that i like hurt it or cut it or whatever i was just like ow like it felt like i crashed like i hit the ground and i was like cool like i probably scraped my elbow and I got up and I yelled back. I was like, Hey, like maybe that wasn't the best idea. And then I like go outside. I like basically run to the other side of the tunnel. Are we, are we, are we, are we? <laughs> then I hear John go and I hear John crash. <laughs> and, and John walks up. He's like, he's like, dude, did you eat shit? I was like, yeah, did you? And I'm like, I yelled back, like, don't do it. And then, we, then, then Devin walks up and we're like, dude, did you slide? And he's like, no, I, he's like, I watched John fucking fall and I wasn't going to do it. Hey, but I was funny because I, had, like, I whole, didn't realize could have had, like, that I was trained that night and it would have been like great for content. We really could have. I didn't know that I was bleeding until I got from the train station until uh, like right across from the origins queue. And the only reason that I decided to check if I was bleeding was because I remember when Dustin crashed, he was like, oh, dude, my sock is wet. My sock is wet. Mm. So, like, I didn't even feel like it was wet. I was just walking and I was like, huh, Dustin said that like he cut his ankle somehow. I was like, well, I wonder if I'm bleeding. And I like touched my, my elbow and it was just like wet. And I like put my hand on there and I pulled it back and through like the, the food coloring in my fingers, I saw that it was like extra shiny and extra dark. And I went, Oh man, oh, my jelly. <laughs> I, I go backstage and I lift up my, my shirt and I was like, Oh, that, that looks pretty gnarly. And John walks back there and he's just, Holy fuck, dude, that's going to need stitches. <laughs> If only Scar, if only the show <laughs> Scarred would have been around like today in the haunt world and stuff. Oof. <clears throat> dude. Oh, dude. That'd be getting so many submissions from the haunt community. Dude, it, it, was, it is, it is, dude. Huh? It was fun. They're just like, what the fuck are these guys doing? Yeah, what, what, what's going on here? It's like, skateboard, what, are, what are skateboarders doing? They're fucking going off rails. At least these guys are on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Still pretty sketch. <laughs> you know, I don't... it's sketch sometimes. Yeah, I mean it's it's um, God, I've gotten knee knee in the face at least three times. I've had only blacked out a little bit, just a little bit. Um, I remember seeing Linus eat the worst shit in Fog Alley. Oh. Um, we were still in camp, and we had gone back to get our incentives. I think it was the last night, mm -hmm. and. Last night, you know, so whatever, fuck it, no rules. Um, yeah. And so we're cutting across into Kmart, uh, a, a heavy fog rolls through. And our another buddy was just like, Lemus, hit a slide, bro. The fog will cover you, no one will see. And he's like, bet. And it goes. He dives into the fog. You hear. <laughs> <laughs> And then we see him fucking flip, like his legs come out from the fucking fog and then fall back into it. Or, uh, I'm like, oh shit. I'm like, Lemus, are you okay? He's like, yeah, I just don't. That didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> now the whole world knows it. So it did happen. Don't tell anybody. Whole world. Don't tell anybody. World. Um, hey, listen, there was this movie that came out last week that I have not seen, but I intend to watch. And now it's called Cocaine Bear. Are you oh. familiar about this? I've heard this story. It seems like a fucking fever dream. This happened. Oh, 
No, this <laughs> this this really <laughs> happened. So this movie <laughs> came out, and apparently, like, this is what everyone is talking about. Like, this movie actually was decently good. A lot of people were saying, like, they was surprisingly good. Like, it was like a kind of a dark comedy and stuff. Like, there was some comedy in it, but. For those who don't know, this is based on a true story. Yeah, I didn't go to this extent, obviously. This is just a for-fun movie, but this is based off something that actually happened about a, a bear sniffing cocaine. I think he, the bear killed a couple of people, but they just took that story and just made this like way over the top. Uh, point of the story is, is after that... Sorry, this ex- what happened? Are we live? Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> We've been live. That's why that whole really? story. I was like, this is, a good, us in there, bud. "This is a good one. This is a good Bro, podcast. Just, it was a good start to the podcast. Hey, you guys were going on, and I was like, "Hey, this is a good start. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna let it roll." Uh, that's fair. Let it happen organically. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's what I like. You know who I learned you guys, from? I was, cut you off. I was just like, you're addressing the entire world, and I was like, "Wait a minute." <laughs> it caught on <laughs> him as I was midway through the co- oh, cocaine bear story, huh? Well, like I know, I noticed it at the end of aj's and i was just kind of like oh well okay whatever and then i was like you did it again and i was like oh wait wait a minute <laughs> what are you doing here is this the thing anyway sorry my bad with the success of cocaine bear <laughs> the creators of sharknado have come out and announced their next project as sort of a rival to cocaine bear you want to take a guess of what that might be hey, i think i saw this i saw this on twitter fucking um was it like meth alligator or something like that? Attack of the meth gator. Fuck, I'm in. Coming oh for my your God. life this summer. So they're going to just fucking create this huge universe of fucking just freebasing animals, just coked out, just fucking meth, like... heroin. What's next? Freaking heroin lion? Heroin lion. You could spell it like, like a heroin. Like... Yep. Oh, I get it. I get it. I, I did not mean to make that a thing, but it worked out, and I'm just going to go with the, yep, that's what I meant to say. But anyway, but I, I mean, I don't know. I, I just... I, I like movies like that because it's just like... You know they're going to be awful. Like, not even that, not necessarily awful, but you know you're going to be fucking entertained. Yeah. You're going to be transported somewhere else. And like the fucking the whole Marvel Cinematic Universe thing, that's all well and good and shit. Like, but it's like sometimes it's a little heavier. It's just like okay, and then sometimes it's just rinse repeat. Like, I'm not going to see Transformers: Rise of the Beasts. I'm going to oh, watch come the on. shit out of that because that's the beast. To, to, to expect a, a, an Academy Award winning film. Oh. Let me continue. Okay, I'm going there to purchase my large Coke, my large popcorn, and my Starbursts and escape. For an hour to an hour and forty five minutes. Don't come at me thinking saying like, oh, Transformers, whatever, this is but shut the fuck up. This movie transported me for at least an hour. I didn't have to worry about shit. And I was entertained. And Optimus Prime made a shitty speech at the end of the movie. Wait, what was uh, it something? I hope you're not referring to the to the original. Oh no. no. You better not. I'm referring to every fucking end of the Transformers movies that you see him make a fucking speech. Well, it's Optimus Prime, man. He's like, he's like, we just won the battle, but before I let you go, I have to make a long and meaningless speech that will only set up it the means next movie. something, and they did just win a battle. The first one, he let everyone know. He let all the Autobots know. Um, and come. Yeah, which only set up a war for like four fucking more movies. Oh, man, that's how the franchises start, right? Now they're going the based off the Fast fucking Fiber, original Fiber. looks and the. Uh, don't even talk about Fast and Furious. We don't talk about Fast and Furious. It's family. It's you know, fucking it's horrible. Is what it is. It's funny because you know the memes are about the family and this and that, and and we uh, Ashley and I went when we went to go see Quantum Mania. Uh, we yeah, you know, the trailer for Fast X came on, and I like I swear to God, I stopped counting after twenty the amount of times that they said family in just the trailer just the trailer literally just the trailer vin diesel imagine what the movie's gonna be like i wonder if like you put the script in like an ai ai bot you know how like some people just have like a computer watch a certain set of films and write a script what that script would be just family i need to protect my family i came went to work and no play make family a dull boy Stevie King reference. I still need to see Quantum Mania. 
I know. Who? Okay, Vincent, have you, are you the only one, or am I the only one that hasn't seen it? You're the only one. Fuck. I have a problem with one character and one character only, and I'm just like... I'll see myself up, guys. Do you want me to leave so we can talk? you guys can talk about it? I think we talked about it last week, didn't we? Okay. Uh, I think we, we talked about the expectations, because I think when we when we recorded, it wasn't, wasn't out yet. yet. If you guys want, I can dip. Just like leave a little like note here to when I rewatch it. Let me know. <laughs> let me let future yeah, me know when stop to leave. Watching. Stop <laughs> watching. Hey, AJ, man. stop watching. No, we can. We can. We're not talking. Oh, this is it. I'll, okay. I'll wait. I'll wait. <laughs> you wanna wait? I'll wait. I'll wait for you to watch I'll it. We'll wait. We could talk about other things like the fact that yeah. uh, stuff. Poppy what's Man- your what's your Poppy uh, Mando came back uh, yesterday? Who saw it? Poppy Stoke. Mando. Who's that? Mandalorian. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Come on. We're in the season of Pedro right now, bro. Uh, yeah, he's got he's got the Mandalorian. He's got the Last of Us, soon to be a Halloween Horror Nights maze. You know, that's, that's has that been confirmed? Rumor? It's uh, it's highly speculate speculative. It's uh made up a new word. It's uh, a uh, HHN map uh, speculation mm-hmm. map. Trademark there. copyrighted speculative Nights of Horror. And they uh, they put it in the uh, where the Walking Dead was. It's speculated to go there. Speculated to go there. So the, based the off of a certain map, I know what you're talking about, and I can't talk a little too much about that because after this podcast, I'm filming something with Sammy about said map. All right, all right. I won't. I love that. Halloween and all. I might get some hate for this. All right, I'm ready. I cannot see spending that much money. For that type of experience, like, do you know how much on like a because you're gonna go opening night? I am with you on that. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> so here's here's my thing, and the, I think this is this kind of goes back into knots, and like, mm-hmm. it's something that knots doesn't understand, and I don't think that they ever will understand, is that the market for Halloween horror nights is some is so different from not scary farm. Like people, I the way that I've always looked at it is people who go to Scary Farm love Halloween and they love being scared. Mm-hmm. People who go to Horror Nights like horror movies and they like the pop Halloween culture. aesthetic. Yeah, it's it's the pop culture, it's the aesthetic, it's the trendy thing to do. Going to Scary Farm, it isn't trendy now. Like, yeah, it was cool, you know, in the nineties or early two thousands when like what? Horror Nights wasn't as big. You know what I mean? But like, as Horror Nights has grown and they've just come continuously i you know fucking ip 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 it's like it's just it's a completely different market it also doesn't and it's it's you know more of like it's more of a party at horror nights than it is like at knots like people go to knots they expect to be scared people go to horror nights to expect to have like a good time and party yeah i will say that it it also in in universal's case they are the company that essentially started the horror movie genre so I mean, yeah. when you yeah. think of Universal, like the the things that you think about in their long history of films, which there's so much, but the ones that stand out the most over, I think, I think it overshadows the entire studio itself is the Universal Monsters. Like that was the that was the the they were really a big part in the new age of not only just a genre of horror, but a new age of transitioning from silent film to film with actual sound in it with talking dialogue and everything like they were some of the first movies to be a part of that that generation of like changing the the way of how we see movies today so i think Mm -hmm. like when you when you take the credibility that universal has with the horror genre and and the massive studio that they are i think the expectations as far as halloween horror nights goes is you're you're expecting to be sucked into those movies and you're expected to be you know, you want to be a part of that, and that's what their thing is with Horror Nights. Where you're right, yeah, Scary Farm is for the diehard Halloween fans, mm-hmm. the horror fans, you know. And and the- I have one question for you, Anthony, and I can't remember if we talked about this or not last time. Um, why would Dracula fight the Phantom of the Opera? It doesn't make sense to me. It, it, I don't know why. Is that one of the speculations for this year? It, it was one That's... for Orlando. Have you seen what the speculation is for for the Hollywood one? It just says Universal Monsters Paris. Yeah, I did. I just saw it was Paris. I didn't see anything else. So when I think Almost. Paris, pretty similar. The only thing I can think that can match good with that is Phantom of the Opera. 
because the, when I think of Paris, I think of usually like a lot of fancy things, and with fancy comes live theater, especially operas, um, which are really big in France and overseas in Europe and whatnot. And that's really the only thing I could see kind of it being like a, like how he did Bride of Frankenstein Lives. This is like a spiritual sequel to The Phantom of the Opera, except now he's taking over something in Paris. See, I would I would love for them to do a, a standalone Phantom because I think that that would be good. Or even like if you want to include two two classics, Phantom going awry around you through hallways. Like you gotta do about. you gotta do the silent film nineteen twenties Phantom because that was the one yeah. that the monsters based off of. Yeah. Like, I think if you're gonna do Phantom, if you if you want to do two, you have to do like I w- I would argue Phantom and Invisible Man. Like those are. You know, those are two good. Just a guest walking through and just getting clocked in the face. Like, who did that? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's a, it's a blackout in a morph suit. <laughs> just... <laughs> this man like, really is 4D. It wasn't Fucking marketed as 4 Ow. <laughs> I guess, I guess, uh, because like, that's, uh, La Llorona was there last year, right? Taco Bell. Taco Bell. La Taco Bell. Um, and like, I thought that they did a good job at correlating the scare zone, you know, to that maze. So would you then correlate a, a scare zone to that maze again, since you already have Paris? And if you, you know, if it's in the Parisian streets and you are basing it in Paris and having it be phantom, I think that you should do a, uh, like a porcelain doll or a masquerade scare zone. Yeah. They've done that, which they've done before. You could do the well, and I think you and I talked about this is that like Universal is a very like I feel like they're in a very throwbacky mood. Mm-hmm. So like, I wouldn't be surprised to see them going back to something that they've done in the past that has been very popular for them. Yeah. Like they, I think that my biggest thing is like I think that they're gonna bring back some version of Exterminators this year. That'd be cool. Um, and I think that if they if they do revisit like that masquerade porcelain doll esque scare zone like i think that, that would be popular yeah i think anything especially with them con- this one's confirmed already too th- with them bringing chucky to the event this year for that i mean a scare zone around like a doll or something like that would be pretty oh, terrible because yeah. yeah. that that area that's a i love that zone i love walking out of the maze and going right 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 into it mm-hmm. so if that's where they're going to be putting the dracula versus the phantom maze which I'm not sure about that, but like the porcelain thing, I know it's been done before, but you said it was a throwbacky type season. Yeah. Um, that would scare the shit out of me. Like a porcelain I, doll staring, staring at me. I'm like <laughs> later. I uh, know that for the most part, John Murdy has kind of finalized his slate for this year. I think he just wrapped up writing his last maze treatment. Um, I might hope so. And he's now he's working on the terror tram. And then they're already they already started construction at the park too, so that's that's incredible. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you think? Do you think? Because I I don't want to talk take away too much of of your your Sammy convo, but um, do you think that that's where uh, William Eyelash will be? Is the terror tram? William, I- <laughs> are you talking about Billie Eilish? Yeah. <laughs> William Eyelash. Is she still Is even? Billie- well, because I had heard the twenty. 2020- I know that was. That was supposed to be like the the 2020 shoot. was I heard that was supposed to be the year she was supposed to have a maze at the event. And yeah. obviously it never happened because of the pandemic. But I guess that was the only year she was going to be able to do it because she was going to change her image right after that. And she was promoting more of that that first album, which is more dark. See, yeah. OK, <laughs> it's, it's where I go a little tangent right now, because I'm not going to say this in the fucking in the video we're going to film. You brought up Billie Eilish, and you brought up, you know, now I'm thinking of the fucking Flash. weekend and shit. <laughs> um, I feel like, in, in my opinion, a Billie Eilish maze would have made more sense as a horror maze rather than the weekend. Now, hear me out. Hear me out, okay? Sell me on this. In order to understand the horror aspects of going through the weekend maze, you had to watch the music videos, okay? Mm-hmm. When I listen to the weekend music without the videos... I don't think horror. I don't think that genre of of scariness. But when you match mm-hmm. the music with the music videos, obviously it makes sense. You have to physically mm-hmm. see his his vision in the music video rather than just hearing it. Okay. Question. 
Mm-hmm. Could, yes. Could you, could you, could you, if you, if, when you're done, I have a question. When Billie Eilish plays, especially that first album, the music is so low tempoed and so kind of like, like kind of, kind of eerie and whatnot, even the way she sings and stuff, that I can see that as a maze just by hearing the music mm-hmm. over the weekend. And I can, and then I go a step further and watch some of her music videos and be like, big time fucking maze right there. Like, so just based on listening to some of her songs, I can already be like, yeah, I can see this as a maze. And then going a step further and being like, look at some of her music videos, I'd be like, oh shit, yeah, definitely this could work as a fucking maze. Looking at that one album cover it was going to be based off of, I was like, yeah, for sure. Like, I could fucking see this as a maze. I'm okay. just saying, like, I Weekend did work. Don't get me wrong. It was a great maze, and okay. it, it actually was a lot better than I thought. But I feel like, based off first listens, like, if you're just going off listening to the music, Billy would have worked more than The Weekend. I That's think, fine. like, then what's, like, okay, so you said, you like, for for anyone to understand the weekend maze, you have to watch the music videos. For anyone to understand a Freddy versus Jason maze, you have to watch the movie. Yeah, but I I don't want to like if I don't if I'm not a big like okay, th- and this is going based off me, okay? Like or people that are in the same. Are you just not more of a not as much of a weekend fan as you? Like, yeah, like I I if I yeah. if I'm not really a big fan of his music, I don't want to take the time to have to watch his music videos, especially when I feel forced to have to watch him because I I have to watch him to understand what I'm going to see in this maze. Because if That's I, fair. you know what I mean, like I I'm the type of prepper like I'm the type of preparation guy that when I'm prepping to watch like the stuff or even if I don't want to, I'm like okay I, I if I'm gonna understand anything in this maze, I need to understand what I'm getting into first. Mm-hmm. So I That's feel fair. I feel like That's after fair. watching those videos, I was like okay like every scene that I seen in the maze, I was like okay like this makes sense to me now. Like I understand the vision he was trying to make with this little short film that he was trying yeah. to do with this album. I went through us before I had seen the movie, but I went with like six other people that had seen the movie and they were freaking out. And I was like, what, what, what's happening? What's happening? So like, I get that. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's, it's okay. Like I get the whole, like you, you were stoked for the Billy Eilish idea because you're a bigger fan. I actually and, wasn't and really. I, I well, prefer not to say like a fan, but like, yeah, you would be, no, you like I, I wasn't stoked for it in the beginning, but like now thinking about where the weekend went and how successful that was. And then thinking about Billy's music and then being like, she would have been equally as successful because she's just as big as fucking yeah. Weekend, if not. Like I'm still hesitant on any type of musician or artist, like yeah. outside of the world of horror, having a maze. Like I know that the Weekend went off, and it was good, and people were like, you know, pleasantly surprised. But I'm just like, why? I I've always yes, just, I guess, okay. it can be argued like not, but oh no, I was gonna say I I I feel that I I guess the only like acceptable. Or like, is, I'm more comfortable with the idea is like, if they're already like horror based, like when Rob Zombie had his his, uh, what was it? Was House it House or Horses? Yeah, when House was there. Um, Alice Cooper had two mazes. Black Sabbath had a maze. Yeah, yeah. Black Sabbath when they released their album Thirteen. Like, I was like, okay, cool, this makes sense. But like, yeah, when you bring in the weekend, where it's just like, dude, like you're a pop star. I don't. I, I don't correlation. Classic shift. I think from a business standpoint, Universal's fucking genius in the sense of oh, definitely they took they took advantage of how popular this guy was at the time. Not to mention he's already a fan of the event, so he worked yeah. very close with Murdy and and the creative team over at Orlando, and they and they designed this concept of what he wanted. So he was already mm-hmm. a fan of the event, which made it easier for them to work with. Like Murdy straight up bypassed all of PR for Universal, and or I'm sorry, um. The weekend bypassed all of PR to Universal and everything and contacted Murdy directly, basically telling him, I want to do a maze. Like, he I didn't even go, th- he didn't go through Universal. He didn't go, he like, he found Murdy's number. He's like, Bro, I want to make a maze at Universal. I was like, it, Apparently, like, I, I didn't go last year because I was not going to pay that much money for all that. Yeah. Um, but I heard and like walkthroughs kind of bittersweet because it's like sick awesome halloween but also it's like it's not as good as this if you were in there you can watch your halloween horror nights walkthroughs on the nights of horror right now <laughs> plug 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 uh, uh, let me get to the video <laughs> so that it pops up. <laughs> yeah where is it I have it right right here there you go <laughs> Wait, that's right there. i don't know but 
I know, I'm excited to see. So do you think they're going to do it? For, do that from here on out? They're going to have like a guest artist every year? So music mazes were big uh, when I started going. 2011, Alice Cooper welcomed my nightmare. 2012, following Alice Cooper, go to hell. And 2013, Black Sabbath, 13 3D. Um, followed by 2014. Don't forget all the slash mazes. That's what I'm saying. Paul, followed by 2014 slash uh, original maze. Uh, which was the Sweet Licks and everything, the the Clowns one. That was all an original score that he made. I almost threw up in that maze. Oh, really? That's that butt-ass smell. <laughs> At the end? Like, turned it on 11, and I was just like, I'm going to throw up. This is, I was on a date, too. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> that's not good at all. But uh, then they took a little bit of a hiatus, and they kind of slowly brought that back with uh, Figure and, and the Universal Monsters. Um, figure kind of been he's always done music for for the event and stuff uh fun fact though uh figure is a very big collaborative person of the event however uh i don't think he's ever been to the event and that's due to where he's from he actually is not even from california he lives like in the midwest i thought he would always yeah, out there. i thought he would always like go and like do like a live set for like uh, a not to my knowledge he may have done it once, um, okay. but he hasn't gone in a long time. Like he's done music for them and stuff, but he hasn't been in a while. And he's like been mean to try to get back out here, but the guy just keeps hashing out tons of music. Yeah, um, he just keeps dropping bangers. Oh, he Must does. be hard. He's got he's, he's got bangers. Bangers. Like I I remember fucking when we were having conversation. I I tell him I'm like you don't realize how many people in the honk community fucking listen to your music, bro. Like just to get warmed up or just to get hyped. Like you have a big he, following, bro. He was like, bro, I didn't realize that. I was like, you make horror based music. We're all gonna listen to it. Yeah. So I mean it's it's I mean it's so cool to see. So like I said, it, it, it is cool to see a new generation of fans coming in, especially when you have a new audience of fans. I mean, when you look at the wait time for that fucking maze, I, I never seen it lower than three hours, which is insane for a fucking wait of a maze, but still Maybe like an hour and a half to two hours for a maze that probably has Eight to ten black walls. And Actually, I'll be well, quite honest with you. The weekend did a very good job. There was like, like good. there was no black walls. I thought the weekend was 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 fully stocked, but like it's, I don't know. I was actually pretty impressed with last year as far as black walls went because there wasn't very many at all. They definitely like lowered their numbers uh, in yeah. terms of black walls, and I think that a big part of that was the Orlando creative team kind of coming over and being like, "Hey guys, this is how you actually build a good quality maze." <laughs> Scarecrow probably the best maze at the fucking event last year. Their original shit is, is what I'm hearing is yeah. also Scarecrow, absolute. fucking amazing. That was that was my bottom maze. The Dust Bowl, bro. <laughs> that was cool. History. What's your starter? What's your top? My top was the weekend. Well, okay, makes sense. My top, I think, I think I went. Uh, Anthony, uh, what, what were the mazes last year? Help me, help me run through. Halloween, uh, nineteen seventy-eight, Scarecrow, um, Universal Monsters, Legends Collide, The Weekend, Killer Clowns from Outer Space, uh, Horror Hotel, La Llorona. Uh, okay, I'm Blonde sorry. House, Freaky. Scarecrow and... was not my bottom. Uh, Killer Clowns was, and it was. Solely because it was it was copy. my bottom. It was my bottom too. Literally, I'm not even lying. I think I'm the only one that noticed this. They literally took that maze and mirror affected it. And what I mean by that is, the first year it yeah. came, everything that was on this side, now it's on this on side. side. And I'm like, this is literally just fucking. What kind of mirror yep. dimension shit is this? Yep. I'm like, you That's literally took the space and literally everything that was on this side, just put it on this side now. Put it over here. Yeah. I was like, this doesn't make sense. I actually think my top two was Weekend and then uh, Universal Monsters. And I know that a lot of people didn't like Universal Monsters, I but I went I went through it twice. I went through it uh, like right kind of when the park opened, so it was still very bright outside. And I was like, wow, this wasn't very like good because, you know, it's, it's Dracula. Why is Dracula coming out? in the sun really you know the maze was all bright you know just from natural sunlight it was one of the ones that didn't have like a fully covered roof that was your biggest complaint uh, haunt actors playing dracula and like why is dracula coming out in the sun no but, like, point, why is dracula coming out in the sun why yeah. is that everyone's biggest complaint he's walking around the park all day get an umbrella he's got sunscreen like yeah, yeah. 
Shit, so, that I, one doesn't? <laughs> no, it wasn't in the budget. We can't cover it. Can't cover this. <laughs> But but walking through it the second time when it was like night night time. Well, that was the other thing. Wolfman, like, why is Wolfman out and there's no full moon? Hey, bro, <laughs> there was never a yeah. full moon every night of the event. What are you talking about? <laughs> hey, at least there was moonlight. All right. Then that completely bypasses all werewolf rules of only coming out in a full moon. I what's your liking? Or Wolfman, fucking yeah, werewolf liking. Or twilight. Or uh, or is a killer box. He's not a dog. He's an animagus. <laughs> or a fucking cocaine bear. Imagine just being able to turn into a bear that's just fucking railed. A or line a of- fucking meth gator. Meth gator. Okay, I don't think any of us will go that far. But anyway, oh, we won't even go as far as cocaine either. That's uh, that's off the table. Anyway, back to reality. <laughs> I think I'm pursuing a, 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 I'm, I'm seriously thinking of pursuing a career in stand up comedy. <laughs> you you should, but you, you should first, before you pursue that, you should first try standing up. We'll fucking start the first sit down comedy club. Sit down comedy club. What would you call it? There. We just need to be funny. The sit down lounge. <laughs> the sit down lounge? I, I feel like I feel like that's a. How like awesome one of those things, would it be to host guys. a comedy improv show of just scare actors? Oh, I don't know. Uh, that, I mean, I feel like there'd be a lot of fucking like funny stories, but then a lot of people being called out too. Yeah, I mean, like they'd have to not be working for the company. <laughs> yeah. Pretty... Well, a lot of people are retiring this year. Let's see how many people can we can That's get from that. <laughs> Nah, I uh, I I don't know. I I went to go see uh, which we 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 saw Burt Cr- uh, Kreischer the other year, a few weeks ago, in okay. Arizona. Um, and that guy's stand up is just so fucking funny, dude. Like, it really was like I was like thinking about it. I was like, I think I could fucking do this stand up stuff. Like, I just gotta look at like traumatic stories of my past and really over exaggerate <laughs> the fuck out of them. What was traumatizing? What was traumatizing? What was what How about the time I tried to open a fucking Gatorade bottle with scissors? It's a twist up. Why? <laughs> Eight year old me thought differently. Eight year old me was like, scissors can open fucking everything. Mm. No, that right now. <laughs> go fucking grab the scissors. Fucking ready to go. I got the Gatorade in hand. Got the fucking scissors wide open. Gonna cut right now and twist it. All of a sudden, it fucking twists to arm, fucking goes into my finger and stabs me in the middle of this fucking area right here. What we were saying, like, why didn't you just twist the top? And you're a child, and, like, thinking we were fucking idiots. Fucking, as kids. it was great, bro. I fucking had a cut of the fucking. I got a cut like really deep. Now there's a scar right there. It's I, one of the best things I ever happened in my life. And this my like my first ever interaction with blood as a child. I remember. Um, there was this kid on our block uh, named uh, Jesus, and we fucking hated him. Um, and it well, was me. Jesus, and... bro. It's complicated. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but we were chasing him on our bikes, and we didn't know what the fuck was happening. Like, it starts off with him coming out with his bike and him, like, looking at us and then, like, riding away real fast. And I looked at my friend, like, fuck it. Okay. And so we ended up chasing him. Like, it's like a figure eight around the two blocks or the four blocks around us. And he had our friend Marilyn on the back pegs. And we come up this alley. And for some reason, he just fucking just cruises onto the sidewalk. And he hits this, like, brick wall that was just fucking toppled over perfectly as a ramp. Him and Marilyn go fucking flying. He goes headfirst into this, like, fucking cement house. And she fucking falls. And we're just like, oh, shit. So we step on our brakes. And he turns. And he's just fucking pouring blood and i'm just like what do we do and he's just like looking at us crying I'm like oh god and it wasn't until in my 30s i realized how traumatizing that was <laughs> oh god <laughs> and like, like we afterwards he ran home and my my homie and i were just like like what do we do is do we check on him if he's okay we go and he was just his dad was not happy that he had to take his son to the hospital um and so we just went home and I just remember that, like, just not being real chill about that until like maybe twenty, no, 
15 years later. Uh, but yeah, it was, it was a trip. Being a kid, being a kid is fucking crazy because you do, you experience a lot for the first time and some of it's watching your friend pour blood out of their forehead. And, <laughs> and yelling, oh God. And I, I broke my collarbone by running into a tree. Um, I had my dog. Stepped on who was just, uh, my dog is Rottweiler. She was just protecting the, her bone that she had. And I was just getting close to give her a little smooch, you know, and it's a little pacifico. And she just turns and she like in, initially meant to like nip at me, like back up. But I was so close. By some fucking freak accident, she managed to tear my tear duct on my left eye. Just my tear duct. Oh. I missed the eye. I was like, oh shit. And so as first time I had to have surgery, the first time on anesthesia, which is crazy. Um it was very I was in this hospital waiting room. It. It's fucking nuts. Can you, cry? Can you cry out of that eye? What's up? Can you cry out of that eye? Not really. It's like streaming and then like drop. Really? Yeah. Oh fuck. Me, I cried until I check. Um <laughs> <laughs> um, I remember coming too because the first thing, if you've ever had, like, if you've ever been under a table or under the lights for surgery, it's just yeah. like a lot's going on around you. They're like, letting you know that they're okay, like, you're okay. Were you you're nosy fine. like me? Like, I was trying to look at everything and everyone. I was fucking terrified, man. I'm just like, Wait, I was you're gonna... too. That's why I was like, what what mean? I'm at, this point, I, at this point, I have to be sleepy to go to sleep. What do you mean you're gonna put me to sleep? <laughs> <laughs> That's and... my anesthesia here. I was like, what the. But they're like passing around all these tools and like all these like paper fucking blue mats and shit. And whoever the fuck it was was talking to me like, "Are you okay?" I'm like, "No." And they're like, "Okay, so you just do me do me a favor, count backwards from ten. I got ten, and then to nine, and then I remember waking, up and I'm just like fucking not so chill. I'm groggy. I feel like shit, and I like look like checking my fucking surroundings. I'm covered in blankets, and I lift up and my fucking pants around my ankles. <laughs> and I'm like, what the shit and it's my sister who's just like yo you're awake what's up i'm like what happened where's mom and she's just like oh she's talking to the doctors about your whole procedure apparently you started pissing everywhere when they were trying to fix you uh... <laughs> so they just kind of dropped her pants and just grabbed a fucking a bedpan and let you go <laughs> It's just like we're gonna get McDonald's on the way home. Don't worry about it. I'm like what the fuck? fuck? Yeah, <laughs> McNuggets. <laughs> oh man, that that was like just experiencing shit as a kid. Like holy fuck, no, no, nobody sets you up with how to fucking handle shit like this, bro. I guarantee you, if I were to cut off one of these eyebrows, there'd be a scar under there too, because I fucking ate shit and busted an eyebrow open one time. What'd you hit? I was we was in elementary school and and my aunt um she used to take care of me but she ran a daycare and uh, mm. so my dad would just come pick us up after he was done with work so we're waiting after school and we're playing on one of the playgrounds right there and we decided like all the kids we decided we wanted to race back to get our shit and go so yeah. we're racing back and I fucking jump and I miss the fucking like there was a little like concrete like little, little step. And then there was like a mm. uh, fucking, you know, you know, like those blue benches you see at schools and shit like that. Yeah. yeah, there was one of those right there. I fucking missed the step, fell, ate shit, landed face fucking first on the the seat of the bench. Fucking yeah. eyebrow just split open, just gushing blood. The fucking funniest part of this story is as I was going to my aunt's house to try to get the blood calmed down and shit, I kept screaming to myself. This is a brand new shirt. It's got blood all over it. <laughs> My mom's going to be so pissed. <laughs> and then all I remember was going to the hospital and my mom and dad fucking like yelling at me. Like not like yelling as though they were mad, like yelling to the point where like, don't fall asleep. If you fall asleep, it's not good. Like don't fall asleep. Yeah. Like they kept telling me the entire time and the entire time I'm in the fucking car, bloody ass eye just you know what's funny is that that it's like come out now that that information is like wrong <laughs> about the whole not going to sleep when you have a concussion. Oh, oh, really? Didn't know that? Yeah. So uh, it came out that like you are supposed to sleep because if you think about it, like you're you've had a, a brain injury, and so like anything mentally strenuous, it's gonna hurt. And what's the what's the one thing that you can do that isn't mentally strenuous? It's sleeping. 
So it, you're basically just resting your brain. Like now, obviously, if you have like a, you hit it really hard, like you want to make sure that someone doesn't like go unconscious, right. mm-hmm. just like pass out. But like if they're tired and like let them sleep, that's like their body wants to heal itself. And like some people will sleep for hours and hours and, you know, you just kind of wake them up, make sure that they're, they're doing okay. They're still breathing. They, you're doing all right, champ. Okay. Right, cool. You doing okay? Okay. 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 Oh That's, man. I always thought like if you fall asleep with a concussion, you're just gonna die. Go into a coma. I thought it was so stress like stressful to make sure you stay like, awake. I mean at that point yeah. you would just go into a coma. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, well that was that's always like the fear, but I mean you can fall into a coma. Yeah. yeah. And go into shock and fall into a Bill, man. Remember, she got up, she couldn't even move her limbs. Yeah, she was like, oh, yeah. she hadn't used her fucking muscles for like months or like a year or something. Years actually. She got atrophy. Her mu- her muscles shrunk. She got that atrophy. <laughs> Quentin Tarantino, man, he's got one more movie left in him, and he said he's done directing movies. Ooh. Quentin Tarantino. Tarantino. Yeah, what do you, he wanted to do? A uh, ten movies, right? Yeah, and it was it was so hard for me to like go into Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and be like, "Fuck, this is movie number nine. What is this?" Yep. Sammy! Sammy! What's up, guys? A new challenger approaches. I, I was heard like, someone was coming. I was like, big conversation. I see another screen pop up. I'm like, "What is this?" I heard someone was coming for my title. They wanted to be on this show more than me. <laughs> That's what I heard. Man. I mean, you're you're a you're a co-host, so I can't I can't compete with the. There's co-host. no pet, there's no yeah. It, it, it's 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 Anthony and Sammy, which is just kind of the top tier that you're mm-hmm. not. Yeah. You guys are invented. Yeah. Uh, okay, pal. Okay, pal. <laughs> I, I didn't mean to interrupt your guys' conversation. I just wanted to say hello. Why don't you just stay about? for the rest of the episode? Because you're gonna have to stay here and work with me anyway. No, I I I plan on the, I planned on staying. Okay, but I don't. I I continue on and I'll I'll jump in later. I was just saying now, I'm like, not even here, guys. <laughs> I was just saying now the fact that like Tarantino's already on his ninth movie, and that means he only has one more movie to direct, and I'm a little sad about didn't that. Didn't he have like a stink? Not like a stink, but like didn't he mention that he wants to do like a specific movie for his last one? I, I I had heard that he's not he's not uh, opposed to doing a horror film. That's what I, that, I that's what I thought. I'd, I also heard he's he wants to do a Star Trek film. I'm like that better not be your tenth film. It needs to be something original. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like J.J. Abrams did the better job with Star Trek, and I think that's a good trilogy on its own now. Like, it was really well done so that anybody who wasn't a Trekkie could watch it and, like, fall in line. Um, however, the the most recent Star Wars trilogy, he, he left it and abandoned it, and I can never forgive him for it because of what we have. Um, because he had more creative freedom with Star Trek. He, I heard he didn't want to do the trilogy. He wanted to do one film. For Star Wars? Or... Yeah, for Star Wars. Yeah, for Star Wars, he only wanted to do one because he had like hope that the other two weren't gonna suck. And wrong. then uh, wrong. <laughs> the, the the next one came out, and he was like, "Ah, yeah." So I should probably shouldn't have ever left. <laughs> I am so sorry, you guys. I I left you alone in the rain. Yeah, you can't fucking go back in the race uh-huh. episode eight now, can we? JJ Abrams watching this. Fuck you. Um, episode eight's my brother-in-law's favorite Star Wars of the new trilogy, yeah, which is quite wa- which is quite wild to me. We had a conversation it's... about it. I looked at him, I'm like, "Oh, buddy, I am so sorry." You need a new brother-in-law. Yeah, uh, I, I have actually, less than his brother-in-law is pretty cool to be honest with you. Outside of that one thing, I like his brother-in-law. Actually, we were vibing in Arizona. All right, I can't. I have I have two months to change that, and I don't think that's going to be changing in the next two <laughs> months. So. Um, I, I can accept him for his biggest fault of like liking episode eight. It's okay. Uh, He's the big homie. He uh he was he was him and his brother going at it constantly is hilarious in the in the fun mm-hmm. manner of things, you know, that was hilarious to me, so shout out. Uh, big shout out. Okay. Yeah, man. I mean who's the I just want to point out that episode nine was the fucking worst out of the three. I'm sorry, I was trying to hold this in. <laughs> have the conversation move forward episode what? nine fucking the rise of skywalker was the shittiest one no I, I, absolute shittiest episode one. eight so, was the shittiest eight, one that's was what it the was. worst 
nine nine was bad. I w- like nine was not good, but yes, it did a good job at like it 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 kind of directed it back more towards like what it was what what it was supposed to be. At least I had a fucking character I liked in nine, which was the emperor. But God, like, that, good, that, but that, you cut the continuity. So you just like oh. so lazy. You got like, oh well. How do we fix this? We'll we'll put the well, hang on one second. We'll put the emperor back in. We'll do that, and they'll love it. The older fans will jump in. No, well, no, 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 no. But, but how did you, yeah. you you do know there's a Come fan out. theory that when that you technically never see the emperor die in episode six. Yeah, you see. Him I mean, yeah. Over. But how long ago was the first what was so, Return of the Jedi? And like he looked like he wasn't okay, and like. That yeah. means that tells me well it's supposed to be a thirty year gap, so that tells well, me from six till now he's been just recovering and he had just enough energy just to fucking try to guide Ray into that direction, which didn't work. But still, here's my thing: you're gonna you're gonna like Palpatine has has Force clones and that that was a whole thing in the the now Legends you know storylines and stuff. So why not revisit that and make it canon? And like, like you could, if you wanted to bring Palpatine back, there was a better way to do it. Much better. Like my my gripe with like the ninth episode is that it was just lazy all the way around. Listen, this is why correcting a John Favreau had a flashpoint idea with the Mandalorian. He was like, "Oh fuck it, we don't like where Star Wars is going. Flashpoint, let's fucking reset it, Mandalorian. That's what we're doing now." What I just learned today by watching a TikTok is that Dave Filoni directed the last scene in uh rogue one yeah i did not know that i may have sent you that tiktok i i yeah yeah i guess he directed fucking yeah the uh, whole fader scene that's all dave filoni i was like no wonder why that fucking scene is beautiful that was fucking terrible so, so the, the story on the tiktok that i saw was that did you, uh did he just say he, re- that the- he recasted vader too yeah but, was in and uh did he just say that rogue one was terrible no, I said it was the best out of all. Oh, I thought you said that movie was terrible. I was like, what? I only want to consider it's a Star Wars film. Yeah, it's fun. That's fair. That's, fair. That's fair. But yeah, no. So I guess uh, Dave Filoni like watched the movie because they like sent it to him to like get his approval and see what he thought. And he like asked them. He's like, oh, like why'd you cast an Italian guy as Vader? And they were like, My how do you know that we casted an Italian guy as Vader? And he's like, well, Darth Vader doesn't talk with his hands, and this guy did. <laughs> <laughs> I love the uh, – there was another interview they were doing for The Mandalorian where literally like mid-interview fucking Dave Filoni and John Favreau are fucking having an argument about continuity. And he goes the, – the interview goes, is this guy – is this normal for you guys? He goes, all the fucking time. He goes, when we're riding, I'll send him stuff and then we go back and forth. Well, this happened in continuity, so this wouldn't happen. I'm like, at least they're taking into fucking consideration of the continuity. I appreciate that shit. Yeah, I was like, they're fans too, man. They've been fans since they were fucking – our age because they fucking grew up with star wars you know what i mean like they're fucking they're fans and they just want to make sure they do it right for the fans for mm-hmm. giant nerds for giant nerds and i appreciate it i mean this is the guy who gave us iron man so I'm like you do whatever the fuck you want bro you have that fucking yeah, you have that golden help. button to do that now yeah he took off he took the whole fucking mcu i'm like uh, you have a golden button to literally start a reset anything you want to you can go over to dc and reset james guns and stuff that hasn't even been fucking started yet and i wouldn't be mad at it one bit i i, I but I, I do want to come back to this point i agree with vincent i definitely think episode nine is the worst of the newest trilogy because i felt like all they did in that movie was oh here's all your fan complaints that you guys were saying on reddit and we're just gonna undo them here um, from episode eight to episode nine, they fucking Avengers Endgame did. I am like I am all the Sith, I, and I am all the Jedi, and I yeah. am Iron Man. And <laughs> was it fucking uh, Finn when everyone shows up? The like look up or whatever fucking post says, and versus you know on your left, I'm like this was exactly what fucking Endgame did. You did this huge fucking fan service that no one asked for, and then you had same company. You, Fucking nobody wanted. They wanted a good Star Wars film. They didn't want fan service. They wanted a good Star Wars film, and they fucking like. I, I agree with with Vincent because it was super lazy. It was just well, we'll just use, we'll use uh fucking the Emperor. We'll use Palpatine, and we'll have that connected somehow to to Ray, and like Ray's gonna be a Palpatine, and then like what would have been a little bit more kickass, and I would have given it to 
to them for this film is if Ray stayed a Palpatine. That would have been fucking. That would have been sick if she if it had changed. Rise of Skywalker. You should like rewrote have it actually be fucking Kylo instead of fucking Ray. Would have been cool. I think. But whatever. Before even all of that, it was such a lazy fucking written movie. I'm very. I'm getting very upset. Need to calm down. Give me a moment. <laughs> I'll tell you this. I'll end. It, I'll end it on this right now. I've seen Rise of Skywalker at least two or three times. I've only seen Last Jedi one fucking time, and that was in theaters. I will never watch that movie ever again. You know what's funny? I've never seen any of those movies outside of watching it in the theater. I've only seen them once. I went to the premiere for the the uh, the Force Awakens because you know that that was like that was supposed to be our generation Star Wars. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I wasn't gonna miss out on that experience. I I, I, mean, I went to a whole marathon. I was like. One through yeah, seven, let's fucking go. Like that was supposed to be the oh yeah, when Star Wars gets big and uh, you know again in thirty years, I can say oh yeah, I was at the Force Awakens. Premiere. I will say I, this: Force yeah. Awakens, I think, was <laughs> the only good one out of the trilogy because we were all hyped and we all were like, "This is going to be our new hope," kind of like our. So you weren't so hyped, I, I was hyped yeah, at the time that it was good, but hindsight, we look back on it and we're like, "Dude, what is this?" Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, also, we were the generation that had the Phantom Menace, Attack of the Clones, and Revenge of the Sith. Yeah. So Which we had to wait till fucking we had to sit through Attack of the Clones to be like, really? This is. You didn't like Attack of the Clones? Not as much oh. as the other two. I love Darth Maul as a character. So like Episode One. Well, yeah, I mean, to me, Darth Maul is. He, I, I like him more than Vader, and that, that I know that's controversial for a lot of people. <laughs> But I think the Darth Maul is... That's a hard one for me, because, like, Darth Maul later on, when he lives on, like, between three and four, he does become, like, a really cool underground, like, uh, traitor and shit like that, a gangster. Yeah. And he runs his own thing. But Vader, dude, Vader was fucking, like, rage. Just, I'm going to fucking kill anyone that's in my way, even my own people, and I'm not going to give a fuck about it. Isn't he in constant pain? That's why. Yeah. yeah. That's what kept his rage going, because he was in constant that's- pain. Fucking metal. The man. only time he wasn't in pain is when he got out of the costume and you see him get dipped in that like bath. That was the, the bath. only. Yeah, bath. like when he was in his chair and out of his costume, that was the only time he was in pain. The emperor purposely constructed that costume to put him in constant pain, so he stayed mad. Well, uh, when he, I think what him and Maul fought in the comics, and and I think one of the lines was like Darth Maul asked him. He's like, I, I, you know, I use my my hatred to to survive when. Kenobi cut me in half and like basically my hatred is what fuels me like what could you possibly hate more than like me and Vader just goes myself and like that was <laughs> <laughs> what a line god damn too Dude, real I'm telling you the Vader fucking the Vader and Obi-Wan fight scenes and Obi-Wan the show was unfucking yeah. believable I I still get goosebumps rewatching them on YouTube like the the dialogue between the two, like you feel the emotion between the two. And I'm just like, this is like, I never thought I was going to see this. Like I never, I didn't think we were going to see this ever with these two actors again. Like I, I, you know, this is special, especially for someone who was a kid when episode three came out in theaters and saw that shit in theaters. And then kind of seeing this years later as an adult, you're like, this is fucking special. This is mind blowing. Like I've been waiting to see this. I have to segue real quick. Um, we're gonna talk about fast food toys, like as a kid, like we got like with the kids meals. <laughs> I gotta say, the uh, Revenge of the Sith watches from Burger yes. King, the reversible watches, yes. Burger King was good. the best like m- toys that you could get as a kid from like a fast food place. Yep. Oh, that's why. Hold on. Yeah, Cat I had butt. one of the. I wore that. I wore that watch all the way through like high school. <laughs> Did you really? Yeah. Uh, I don't know where it went. I'm kind of upset that I don't have it anymore. But Find it on eBay. Yeah, that, watch was, that watch was clutch. And also, Bur- like, Burger King tasted just way better when you were it, kids. It I like like it so they changed their menu. I, I, and, like, I have a heart. I, it's like a Mandela effect with people. At some point from, like, it, they changed their – it was when they changed their fries because their fries didn't used to be that thick. Yeah, and when they changed their menu, like all of their food, like tasted differently. I don't know if they just got like a new supplier or they like they, have. like completely like just went. All right, like we're gonna call this the Whopper, but it's a completely different burger. I, it's I, not I, flies, but like 
Burger King had the banger toys with like with the Pokemon gold cards. Fucking. Mm -hmm. I will say I did enjoy the McDonald's the uh, the little sports video games. Oh yeah, those are cool. I like the uh, this was like fucking very niche. Um, I think when did Batman Forever come out? But they had like the glass cups. If anybody fucking oh, remembers. Oh yeah 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 yeah. I know what you're talking about. I've seen those cups. I I, I know what you're talking about though. Yeah, they certain. Yeah. Those not not to date you, AJ, but I don't think any of us were like old enough to like. It was like the late nineties. It's okay, AJ. I know what you're talking about because I'm a Batman fan. Listen, <laughs> I know what you're talking about because I'm a Batman fan, so it's all good. I know. Okay, but I, I... go so... for it. I'm gonna totally change the topic with my toy, so don't even. <laughs> what kind of toy, Sammy? Which way are we going with this, bud? uh mcdonald's it was early 2000s they used to have these little mp3-esque toy that oh. you put like the, with the single play songs in them with like i remember yeah. like trying to collect all the backstreet boys and nsync yeah. ones when was i was like four a little player that people had and it was like it was just a small disc enough just to have one single on it i remember britney and like nsync having uh, unlock something yeah that was that was my like favorite toy when i was five <laughs> Probably like that's how you do a proper <laughs> that's how you do a proper back to the future reboot if there were ever to be one right there fucking get something that's gonna attend to like our generation that way we could be like fuck do you remember that shit in the 90s bro like fuck i've i mean i've i've thought of that i've often thought who hasn't thought of back to the future part four you know like that's the dream there was an amazing trilogy sadly it will never happen with michael j fox but however Nobody thought a third Ghostbusters film was going to happen, and yet Afterlife came in, and it was it wasn't bad. No, but just... they literally will never do one because I think Michael J. Fox is retired from acting because of his Parkinson's, which is sad. That could be, I think so. I mean, like it makes sense, but I remember this was I don't know when, but a long time ago. Uh, I think he had, somebody had asked him the same question. He said it, he would he wouldn't be against it, but he would have to play the doctor. And I'm like, controversial opinion. Possibly, possibly. The third Back to the Future is the best one. Uh, that's a fucking lie. It, 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 three, three, one, two. It, three, one, two. I two is my least favorite. I I love two because of the future. The future looks so promising, and I'm like, eh, you know what though? One can still believe, like in an alternate universe, like that's what the future was like. Was. I'm like, I need Jaws thirteen in three D, bro. Like that shit popping out at me and shit. I get where you're coming from, though, Vincent. Like I think. Three was super solid, a really good way to end the whole thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, I, you know what? I agree with you. Three, one, two. Because, like, two is really good. But not to say that I, I hate one more than the other. I just like one more than the other. Yeah, no, I, I think none of them are, like, bad. It's just it happens. There happens to be only three movies. So I have to go, like, three, one, two. Because I, I like I like three is my favorite. And I don't know why. I think that. We like I think I like three because it took a good story and like it just it retold it in like a different way that wasn't like it, it they made it a western like yeah it just, it was, yeah like it, it I don't know how they did it but they made it work right the first one I have to put second because without the first one we wouldn't have any of the other ones and then the second one is just like yeah you're a good movie but like I'll be honest with you the second and third one weren't supposed to happen. It wasn't I mean, supposed to be a trilogy. As a yeah, joke, was, as a joke of the ending, they were gonna say they just were gonna leave it as you gotta come back to the future with me and Rhodes when we're going when you're gonna that was just gonna be it. There was gonna be a one movie thing and that was it. Movie made so much money that the studio demanded that they did a second and then the second okay. made a lot of money, then they demanded they did a third one, that was what wrapped up the trilogy. Because they filmed Ooh. two and three back to back. That's why, mm. like, if you watch the end of two, they had like a trailer kind of cut already for three. And like the conclusion, yeah. so because they shot them both back to back, like that's why they took forever to come out. Also, Leia Thompson's a babe. Oh yeah, she's hot. <laughs> Complete babe. Sorry, I just wanted to put that out there, make sure. It was... But um, I I have to go one, two, three, honestly, because like I loved the first one and everything. It's four. Like the nostalgia of the first one is awesome. Whatever. I feel like whatever. Whatever cat, like whatever you put them in, there's no wrong choice. No, there's not, because the the trilogy itself is one of the greatest trilogies to ever be made. Like it's up there with what, like the next thing I can think of is Jurassic Park, which was 
amazing and really like a, a staple of a lot of our shot. Well, I mean, at least mine. That's the I've same only thing with the original them. Jurassic Park trilogy. It's one, two, three for me because I think the third one's absolute dog shit, but that's just me. Yeah. No, uh, I like Lost World. Lost I'll give them good. Lost World, that's why it's two. But three was like, he didn't need this. I thought the cool part of three is when they were supposedly making Jurassic uh, Park in a theme park, that was actually them mil- building the ride for Universal Studios Hollywood. Huh. Yeah. Huh. That so is that, cool. That was a cool little Easter egg. It's like, oh, that's really them constructing the ride. That's awesome. But uh, <laughs> let's not even get started with Jurassic World because that trilogy started really fucking solid and then literally went like that. Yeah, that's one, three, two. One, three, two on that. I, I, I was, I have, I, I like have... two over three. Three was like three over two. I, I just, I, three was literally thrown in there like, hey, let's bring back the original cast. We'll make a fuck ton of money from it. Well, I like the idea because two, they fucking, they brought everything into this universe, into this reality, into yeah. like, it's all right, sick. Now it's like, all right, good luck living your day to day life without getting fucking eaten. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. And oh, then, by the it, way, we know how to clone people too. <laughs> Oh shit! Okay, I haven't seen it. You haven't seen <laughs> the second one. I haven't seen the third one. I haven't oh, seen no, the third, the, the, the second second one. one. That's oh, the second one. That's the second one. Oh shit! That's oh, right. Oh. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Vince All right. You're like, what the fuck are we talking about? Uh, but we're I, still talking about Jurassic Park, but now we're on Jurassic World. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I've only ever seen the first Jurassic Park and the first Jurassic World. I might have seen the second one. You've never seen the Lost World. Watch the Lost World. Lost World's good. Good one. Really good. What happens in in Jurassic World Part Two? Is that when uh, uh Ian Malcolm uh, John Jeff? Wait, hang on. Which one? Fallen Jurassic Kingdom. World or Jurassic World Two? Is that where uh, BD Wong comes back? He came back in the first Jurassic. He was in all the Jurassic Worlds. He's he's actually the only character that's been in every Jurassic Park. But he uh, becomes like sexy and prominent in the second one. Yeah, in the second one, uh, yeah. a big time investor comes in and buys out like kind of like the program that they were doing over at Jurassic World. And figures out that they could start cloning and using human DNA and whatnot. And then you actually find out in the second uh, Jurassic World that um, they went as far as to even clone uh, a, to clone a person using the DNA of the uh, the old man from Jurassic Park, and that becomes like his like great great granddaughter or something like that. Or I don't remember, but it's like it's a whole fucking thing. I was like, this it, it, it kind of lost me at that point. And then like going into Dominion, I'm like. At least there's no fucking clones here. Like everything is based on the one dinosaurs. It would have been cool if they took I mean, in for, for as prominent of an actor that BD Wong is. I only ever see him as the psychiatrist uh, from Law and Order SVU. <laughs> 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 dum, dum. Dum, 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 dum. I don't think I've watched Law and Order since like 2004. Oh, so dude, that was like that was the show that like. When I was a kid and I like couldn't sleep, I'd like wake up in the living room and the TV would still be on, and I dun dun, and like I just didn't know what was happening and be like, all right, well, cool, we're gonna watch uh, either Vincent D'Onofrio or uh, uh, Detective. Uh, Vincent or, D'Onofrio was on that fucking show. Uh, well, Vincent D'Onofrio was a uh, Law and Order. Um, it wasn't the original Law and Order. It was uh, shoot. Hold I gotta on. wrap it up. Soon. This guy's getting hungry. Law and Order SVU or Law and Order Crime Unit or Crime something and uh well he the spinoff was organized crime was it just Law and Order Law and Order Criminal Intent that's what it was oh, yeah he's yeah there's Law and so Order many- Criminal Intent was uh Vincent Vincent, Vincent D'Onofrio and then uh SVU was uh Chris Maloney and Mariska ha- uh, Haggerty and Richard Belzer rest in peace and Ice T. Oh, Ice T. Can't forget about him. You can't forget about the T. Yeah, is uh, I I when he was like early on in in his career, they wouldn't give him a script. He would just like every reaction, like line that he had was just like him reacting as Ice T. <laughs> oh to, like, shit! Like <laughs> playing it. Like cries in Spanish, like says he reacts in Ice T. <laughs> <laughs> like. <laughs> 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 oh, man. uh, but yeah, I mean, Jurassic World started like this and then went like that. Where Jurassic Park was like that, and then the third movie was like, yeah, I'd say it plateaued. It, the third movie was isn't something I fucking be stoked to like. I would go out of my way to get from the shelf and put in the DVD player or anything. Before but we go though, 
Got to say. Vincent, what's the quote of the day? Oh, the quote of the day? Oh, I, don't know. I don't know. What kind of quote do you guys want? Question. Um, Let's go with something philosophical. Oh, hold on. Hey, hey, did you stop? We got a cat yell. We got Sorry. Cat yell. Philosophical. Hmm. Uh, what are you feeling? What are you thinking? What oh. speaks to you, Vincent? What is what is your heart saying? What is your what your head, your mind, and your brain saying to you? That's three that's, of those things. That's I feel like the, I'm in that's therapy right now. Happening all at once. Well, it started when I was a child. <laughs> it was a dark and stormy night. Um, <laughs> you never taught me how to read. <laughs> Which is why I still don't know how to read. Uh, Excuse me, uh, sir, would you like to read this this pamphlet on a uh, on illiteracy? Uh, no, I'm, I'm illiterate. Can Can you read it to me? <laughs> no, well, that's that's actually why I was I, I needed your help. I'm I'm illiterate. <laughs> I can't um, read. Do you want like a, like a funny philosophical like like a this joke? Some comedy like, in there. Yeah. Like a little, so this was like a little meme, and it was like the early days of the meme when it was just like a, a image, and then like the little spirally background things, and it was a picture of uh, Confucius, and it was uh, Confucius say, "If you run in front of the bus, you get tired, but if you run behind the bus, you get exhausted." We are not worthy. Thank you. We are not worthy. New haunt character for the 50th. Yeah. He's just going to be telling puns like that. Thank you. You know, if I ever went to Carnival, um, <laughs> I have, I have a character. I wouldn't tell anyone I'm going to Carnival, but there'd be signs. Yeah, there, there would be. <laughs> they would know. They would know. They would, they would know. know. I, would hear, I would hear a pun. I'd be like, son of a fucking bitch. <laughs> God I, would, damn it. I wouldn't tell anyone, and I'd like, I'd have to, like, just keep it very hush hush. I'd have everyone keep it hush hush. You need and to keep you it just... like Cody Rhodes showing up at WrestleMania hush hush. Even though we that wasn't hush. No, even though we knew it was all gonna happen, <laughs> the pop was make... still fucking crazy, bro. Dude, I would make like two masks, and I'd be like, "Oh, check out my new ghost town face, guys!" And then like secretly in the background, I'm just working on a carnival clown. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh god! I think I would do well in carnival. That's what happens when you put a bunch of freaking monsters with a bunch of freaking podcasters. Just don't know where this is going. Who are the monsters and who are the podcasters? Oh, me and Sammy, we're Ghost Town Streets, bro. Where are you guys at? Uh, uh, uh unemployed <laughs> right now. <laughs> hey, bro. Yeah, homie, I, homie said hello scream over there. I I, uh, I patrol uh, right in front of the, the the water ride. What is that called? Bigfoot Rapids. It's my it's my zone, guys. Be better be yeah. careful. <laughs> yeah, the Catholic wilderness right there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Better be careful. I missed that area. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching another episode of Shoot the Shit. If you guys enjoyed today's episode, hit that like button. Leave some comments down below of some of the topics we talked about. We'd love to hear your opinion, thoughts, anything you want to share about today's topics. Uh, we'd love to hear it. Follow us on social media at the Knights of Horror on TikTok and Instagram, and Knights of Horror on Twitter. Knights of Horror Gaming on Twitch. Go check that out. And uh, last but not least, hit that subscribe button with that bell notification where every time we put up a new video, we are so close to 3,000 subscribers, and we need your help to get there. So we appreciate all those supporters who have uh, followed us thus far. We love each and every one of you equally, no matter your gender, race, uh, what you identify as. We love you all equally, and we will see you guys next time. Bye.